Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to try to run through a quick demonstration mini lab here. So I'm going to uh, conduct the experiment. Uh, there's one where you can actually do it at home, but the rest of them, I've got the materials here. If you have the materials at home, by all means, recreate it. Um, and then I am going to pose some questions. It's not an official lab or anything like that. It's just uh, a little demonstration that we would have done in class to start off this unit. And then based on that and um, our first lesson, you should be able to come up with the properties of light. So uh, stay tuned and I'm gonna run through each of these stations, hopefully clip this uh, film or this little, all these clips together so we can have one nice long video that shows all of the activities. Right. So here is station number one or station A for the light up your life demonstration. And what we have are some filters. We have the three primary color filters, red, blue, and yellow, okay? And then the first question says, what happens when you shine a light through the filter? So what do you think is gonna happen? Well, I'm gonna take my red filter, I'm gonna shine my light through it, and I'm gonna shine it onto the piece of paper. And you can see the results. When I do it with the yellow, you can see the results. And when I do it with the blue, you can see the results. Okay, so that's the first part of station A. Second part of station A says, what happens when you overlap the different colored filters? So I'm gonna take red and yellow, I'm gonna overlap them, I'm gonna shine them. And I hope you can see what the color is with my video. I'm gonna do the same thing and overlap them, blue and red and you can see the resulting color. And I'm gonna take blue and yellow, and you see the resulting color, okay? And then the next one says, what happens when you overlap all the colors? So I'm gonna take the three again, I'm gonna shine it, and you can sort of see the results, okay? We can also, I've got three others, I've got a purple, an orange, and a green, I don't think my light is bright enough, but the more filters I have, what ends up by happening? And you can see really nothing, okay? So that was it for station A. All right, so here we are on with station B. And station B, you guys can actually do this one. This is one of the few that you guys can do. Um, what you need is a mirror. So I got a mirror, you can see my daughter there holding the camera. And we've got me. And, oh, I look good. Okay, so what you do is you look at the camera, or sorry, you look at the mirror, and you ask yourself, what do you see, okay? Then what you need to do is step away from the mirror. As you step away from the mirror, do you see more or less of yourself? As you step closer to the mirror, do you see more or less than, your, uh, than yourself? What you need to tell me is why. As you get farther away, do I see more of my lovely face? And if I do, tell me why. Do I see less of my face? If I do, tell me why. As I get closer, same thing. Do I see more? Do I see less? And why? All right, that's station B. All right, here is station C. In the station C, we're gonna be playing with a little bit of graph paper and two lenses. I've got a double concave lens right here. And the double concave lens looks something like this very crude drawing where both ends of the, or both sides of the lens curve inwards, kind of like a cave. And then I've got a convex lens where the two lenses curve outwards, okay? So this one's kind of like a magnifying glass. What we're going to do is we're gonna take a look at the magnify or at the uh, lenses, sorry, look at the graph paper here through the lenses. And what you're gonna tell me is what happens to the distance between the lines when you move each lens further away from the paper and what happens to the distances of the lines as you move it closer to the paper. So here we go, we're gonna start with the convex, so the one where it's kind of like a magnifying glass, the two ends are bump, uh, bumped out. Okay, so you can see the image right there. I'm gonna move it farther away. Maybe you can see what's happening. I'm gonna move it closer down, closer to the paper, so you can see what's happening, so again, Farther, closer. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the concave lens. So it looks like this one right here. And the double concave. And here it is very close. As I move it farther away, don't move the camera. And then move it closer. 
closer. So again, farther away, closer. This one might have been a little harder to see, but we'll give it a try. Okay, here is station D. And those of you that have been in my classroom may have seen a couple of these props in the classroom. My question to you is, what do each of these devices all have in common? Okay, what does this tell us about light? So number one, what do they all have in common? What do these tell us about light? And lastly, what do you think would happen if we did not have enough light for these devices? All right, here we are on station E. And this one you guys are gonna think is kind of simple and straightforward, but it's important. We have a piece of glass, okay? Clear piece of glass from a picture frame, very dirty. We've got some tissue paper, crinkly tissue paper, and we've got our grade eight science textbook. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna shine the light through each of these, okay? And we're gonna see what happens as we shine the light through. You are simply just gonna tell me what happens. Why, does the, why do we see what happens? Why does whatever happens happen? So here goes the, the most fascinating one. We've got the flashlight with the glass. What a surprise that is. You're gonna have to tell me what is happening there. We've got the tissue paper. Shining the light through the tissue paper. Okay, so you can sort of see the light through the tissue paper. And lastly, we're gonna take Science in Action 8 textbook and shine the light through it, okay? What is happening as we shine the light through that? Remember, particle model of matter said all the particles, there's spaces between them. Why are we seeing what we see? Okay, that's it for that one. At station F, I've got a little pet laser pointer. I've got a jug of water with some cornstarch in it. I'll mix it up just so that the water is a little bit cloudy. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna shine this laser through the, uh, shine the laser through the water at the surface. And hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see what happens. So what, what I want you to do is tell me what do you notice about the laser beam as you shine it at the water level, above the water level and below the water level. So right here, I'm gonna shine the laser straight across, okay? You can sort of see that the laser goes straight through. Now I'm gonna shine it at the water level. So take a look this way. Okay. And you can see right at the water level and above the water level, you can see the laser going through the water, hitting the particles of baking soda, and something is happening. You have to tell me why is that happening? What is happening? And then shining it straight through right at the level. Okay, you can see something happening there. Okay, so I like this one. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of neat. You're gonna have to tell me what is happening with this laser. Okay. All right, here is the last station, station G. We're gonna have a mirror and a laser pointer again, okay? And what I'm gonna simply do is shine the laser pointer along the piece of paper at the bottom towards the mirror, and you're gonna tell me what happens. So the first question you have to answer is, what happens to the laser beam as we shine it at the mirror? And then the second thing I want you to notice is, what do you notice about the angle of the reflected ray? So the angle of the ray that comes out, what do we notice about that with regards to the angle going in? So here we go. So we've got our ray, we've got our, angle, our laser on the ground, okay? I'm gonna shine it, hits the mirror, you're telling me what happens and what do you notice about the angle of the ray? Okay, or the ray going in and the ray going out. There's something pretty unique. You might have to sneak ahead and snoop ahead to topic 2.2 if you want, but let's see if you guys can figure it out without doing that. All right, that's the last station. All right, now that we've watched through all of those demonstrations, and you've answered all those questions, you are going to try to come up and tell me what are the four properties of light that we actually witnessed throughout all these demonstrations. Now, the way you're gonna present this to me is totally up to you. I'm okay if you answer all these questions on a Google Doc. I'll put the document on um, D2L and you can just type it, copy it and type it onto a Google Doc and share it with me. The other thing you can do is Possibly, I'm gonna to try to start rolling out a flip grid 
so you can record yourself on Flipgrid. I think it's a five minute video and you can just record the answers to me. This is probably gonna be a small summit of assignment, so let's make sure we get this in and um, we'll go from there. So that's it. I hope you guys had some fun with this or have some fun with this. It'd obviously be more fun if you could do it yourself, but we are in a situation where this is the way we have to do it. So until next time, have a good day.